You're listening to Spiritual Encounters with Pastor Casper McLeod. And now, here's your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper. So I'm really excited to have Rabbi Zev back here to enlighten us on some uh, amazing insights as he does. And um, we just want to welcome everybody again to a Another spiritual encounter, and I am your lion-hearted host, Pastor Casper. Rabbi Zeb, what's going on in your part of the world? You're up in, are we, can we say where you are? Or you're at an undisclosed location, let's leave it there. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm somewhere uh, between the mountains of Israel and the city right now, uh, doing some outreaches and some ministry work. And uh, so, I'm, I'm close the location, uh, depends who's asking. Crazy show. It's an honor and blessing to be here. It's always good to see you, Pastor Casper. Uh, you know, as I always like to say, we're living in prophetic and exciting times. And uh, when I see demonic outpouring, uh, to me, it encourages me because I see we're getting closer to the second coming of Yeshua. And I see that uh, Satan's pulling his last straws out. You know, he's, he's running out of ammunition. That's what I see. And uh, so people need to, to understand that when you see Satan pulling out his last straw, that's exactly what should encourage you that your redemption is near and that we're going to enter, uh, you know, the new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem soon. How soon? I don't know, but we're getting very, very close. That's for sure. So that's, that's the way I look at things when I see a demonic outpouring. It's a, it's a biblical uh, way of looking at things and it keeps you going. Absolutely. Um, I, it seems to me the enemy, um, the kingdom of darkness, those on the far left uh, that have joined the kingdom of darkness, they're, they're running scared. They're, they're, you're right, that they're running out of ideas and ammunition. What would Jesus do? What would Yeshua do? Would, would he wear a face mask? And I thought, can anybody imagine the Lord Jesus, Yeshua, of all the the Lord of all creation wearing a face mask, and then he goes and touches some leprosy people, right? The most horrible disease, leprosy. And he was wearing the face mask, and he put on gloves, and he went, let me touch you, and I will heal you. I'm God Almighty, right? <laughs> How does that work, right? That's ridiculous. What do you mean would Jesus, Yeshua, wear a face mask? And um, there's a feast coming up. Um, why don't we talk about some, some of those leprosy? Because there's a lot of scriptures about leprosy all through the scriptures here absolutely and i think that uh, a lot of people uh want to know about the feast i mean are, are we to celebrate the feast as believers how are we supposed to celebrate the feast as believers and i think it's a good start to start uh, you know with leprosy we're going to give a different angle to it a different approach to it but you just mentioned would you would the lord yeshua jesus put on a face mask and now if if you know what leprosy is in the bible especially in biblical times where they didn't have medicine, they didn't have all the, uh, all the things that we have today in technology. We know that the lepers in the Bible time, they were cast out. They were, they were put outside of the camp. No one was allowed to get near them. They were quarantined, but not for 14 days. They were quarantined for, for months. Some of them never made it out of quarantine and they end up dying in those camps. So think about it like today, modern time quarantine. And well, did Jesus, did Yeshua, put a mask on, or did he put a handkerchief on his face, or did he tell his disciples to do that, or other people that were with him? The answer is absolutely not. So if Jesus didn't do it, obviously we don't need to do it. Now, am I saying that uh, encouraging people not to put on the face mask? Look, I just finished an outreach uh, yesterday. We're going to be do launching a report on this this week uh, where I was in the old city in Jerusalem area, and, and, I ha and I put on a mask, and the reason I put on a mask, Pastor Casper, because the law requires me to. But when I preach, I encourage the people not to put their trust in that mask, put the trust in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is Jesus, Yeshua. So would Jesus wear a mask? Absolutely not. We have the Bible that says that he didn't cover his face, and he didn't ask others to cover their face. And I want to draw our attention to uh, the book of Luke, chapter 17. And I'm going to read from verses uh, 11 to 19. It's important that we read these Bible verses. And then we'll see what and how this even ties in with the prophetic times that we're living in right now. And uh, I think it does tie in a lot with the, with the coronavirus because uh, think about this uh, leprosy. It's deadly, right? More deadly than the coronavirus even, according to what I, we read. In the, absolutely. 
So I'm reading Luke uh, chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Now, on his way to Jerusalem. Now, this is speaking about Yeshua. Yeshua, Jesus, is on the way to Jerusalem. Uh, Jesus, Yeshua, traveled along the border between Samaria and the Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. And what did he do? He panicked and he put a mask on. No, he took his, uh, his clothes and he put it over his face and he said, oh, no, we got to put a mask on. No, he didn't do that. And you can say, well, he's God. Well, yeah, he is God. But the Bible says in, in, uh, in, in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 15, and I'm paraphrasing, that Yeshua set an example for us. He's setting here an example. Did he hide his face when he approached the leprosy? Absolutely not. As he was going into the village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. Well, they were pretty far away, maybe, maybe two meters, maybe six feet. I don't know how long, what distance they were. They, were. they were far away. And they called out with a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. Now, this is where it begins to time with the feast of the Lord. He didn't raise his hand and he said, okay, I'm going to heal you right now. He had them act in obedience, act in faith. He said, go show yourself to the priests. And they went and they were cleansed. So we see here something very important. First of all, we see that they were cleansed after they went to the priests. They had to have an act of faith, which they had, but obedience, they had to have obedience, the fruit of the spirit, which they had because they went and they showed themselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, notice there were 10, but only one of them who saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Yeshua, at Jesus' feet, and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. He was, a, he was from the nations. This is a beautiful picture that the, the, the Bible, that the salvation, that the blood of the Lamb is for all nations. So we have here 10 people who were sick with leprosy. Some of them were probably Israelites. But out of all the 10, only the Samaritan, only the one that was from the nations, uh, fell down on his knees and praised Yeshua. Jesus asked him, were not all 10 cleansed? He asked them, where are the other nine? Why aren't they praising? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Beautiful picture of the gospel being rejected by the Jews. Paul went, went to the Jews and they rejected the gospel, so they went to the nations. This is what's actually showing us here. Then he said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. So we, according to the Bible, were once all lepers. Because if you look at the word for leprosy in Hebrew, the word for leprosy, Pastor Casper, is the word mitzua, and it comes from the word tsaot, which comes from the word also, uh, it comes from a word from uh, sickness and disease and sorrows. And the book, in Isaiah 53, most of the translations, the one that are close to the Hebrew, said he was, he was esteemed a man of sorrows. So we can see that in Isaiah 53, which is a beautiful picture of Jesus, Yeshua, going to the cross and rising uh, from the dead on the third day. If you read the whole chapter of Isaiah 53, I'm not going to read that right now. We can see that he was a man of sorrows. He was a man that took our leprosy. That's what you read in the Hebrew. You won't see that in the English. But if you understand the context and the meaning in Hebrew of the word leprosy, you do see that he took, he bore our sins, he bore our sorrows. We were all once with leprosy. But through him, we had faith. We called on his name, and we gave praise to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. Now, this is what the feasts are all about. The feasts are all about giving praise to God. When you give praise to God, then your faith is in, act, is in motion. Your faith is active. Part and, and the feasts, we're not looking at the feasts here as, as, uh, as a religion, uh, Pastor Casper. We're looking at the feast as a step of faith, as giving thanks, as giving praise to the Lord. And uh, a lot of times people like to ask, yeah, but uh, it says in the New Testament, in many places, and the feast of the Jews was at hand. So it actually says the feast of the Jews, so it's not the feast of the Lord. But we need to understand something. And I'm not saying that the Old Testament is an error. I'm not saying God's word cannot be an error. What I am saying is that a lot of the translations have errors inside, man-made error, not God errors. And the only way we can find out where are the errors in the, in the New Testament? Where are we going to find this out? Is it a Hebrew land uh, issue? Is it a, it's, it's a spiritual issue. And we're going to find the answer in the Old Testament. Because 
when these uh, writings in the New Testament, the Brit HaChadasha, were written, actually they were taken from where? They were taken from the Old Testament. When Jesus was walking in his ministry and he was preaching, he was always quoting from the Old Testament. When Paul, he was quoting from the Old Testament. So we need to understand that the context is always going to be found in the Old Testament. So a lot of, you know, we see Satan working overtime over here. As we spoke about earlier in the program, the, he's pulling out his ammunition, trying to get believers who believe in Yeshua, Jesus, away from these feasts of the Lord. Because these feasts of the Lord have multiple fulfillments in them. For example, we're going right now into the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets may be a one-time-a-year event, but it has multiple fulfillments in it, just like the seven trumpets in the book of Revelation don't blow at one time. So in the Feast of the Lord, the idioms don't blow at one time. So it's very important to realize that they're not the Feast of the Jews. They're the Feast of the Lord. Another thing we need to realize is Paul knew the Bible. Paul was a Pharisee. Paul was someone who studied the Bible. The Bible says that he persecuted believers. And we know that he had this Damascus Road experience. And, and I'm paraphrasing, and, and the Lord calls him, and he says, Paul, Paul, why do you persecute me? And Paul has this Damascus Road experience. He falls off, and, and he sees uh, the light, the light of Jesus, Yeshua, and he accepts Yeshua as, as his personal Savior. And the question has to be asked, will Paul contradict the Old Testament? And the answer is no. So therefore, when it says in the Feast of the Jews was at hand, we need to understand that Paul didn't write this, or the other apostles didn't write this. It was translated in a wrong way, either by the translators who didn't understand the culture, or they really believed that these feasts belonged to the Jews, and so that's what they wrote, or it could be the hand of the enemy working behind the scenes through Constantine and through uh, other people uh, trying to get believers away from the Word of God and following pagan tradition and pagan holidays. And sometimes even, I, the amount of emails that we're getting right now before the feast, sometimes even believers that are uh, wanting to celebrate these feasts, they begin to celebrate it in a religious way and they swear they want to start eating kosher, they want to start you know, doing the Sabbath like the Pharisees do, and they start losing control. So there has to be a balance. And I always like to say that the balance is the Word of God, is the Bible. So I wanted to clear up that part of the Bible where people are reading their New Testament and it says, wait a minute, this guy's saying they're the feast of the Lord. Well, I know, I read it in Matthew, I read it in Luke, I know the Bible says they're the feast of the Jews. So I just cleared that up. It's a translation issue. It's not a God issue. God is not the, uh, the author of, of uh, confusion. God will not contradict his word of God. And I wanna draw us to Leviticus chapter 23, verse two. And there's a lot of translations. The reason I wanna draw us there is because uh, Leviticus 23, verse 2, uh, tells us that uh, they're the feast of the Lord and not the feast of the Jews. Very important to realize that God chose the Israelites as the chosen people. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, says that he chose Israel not because they were great or not because they were, uh, they were righteous. He chose them because they were the least. He wants to show his glory. He wants to show that we're small people with a big God the beautiful picture is that all of us under the blood of Jesus, under the blood of Yeshua, are in, grafted into Israel, spiritually Israel, the new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. We're going to all sing the song of Moses, which is the victory song of the Lamb. And, we, and these, these feasts belong to us because we belong to the Lord. So Leviticus chapter 23, verse 2, it says, Speak unto the children of Israel. That's you and I. We are the children of Israel, all those under the blood of the Lamb. Concerning the feasts of the Lord. There we have it. They're not the feasts of Israel. They're the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. And I chose the translation. There are many translations that's closest to the original Hebrew text. The word feast, and I believe we spoke about this in previous programs, but it's very important to go over it again. The word feast in Hebrew is the word moed, and it's not like you and I think about having a a big uh, dinner or something. I mean, you can have a dinner, but I'm just saying that the word feast there is the word moed, and it means fixed appointed time. So God is saying, speak unto the children of Israel, that's you and I, he speaks to us through his word, through his Holy Spirit, concerning my fixed appointed time. So already we can see that these feasts are not just a one day celebration, they're a fixed appointed time. We have a date with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Very, very important to realize that which you shall proclaim, the word proclaim in Hebrew is the word kara, which means to market, to make recognizable. 
preach the gospel, go into all the nations and preach the word. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to preach the gospel. Uh, as as uh, Mikhail Kodesh, and it says uh, holy convocation. The word holy convocations, there are various teachings out there and various translations of holy convocation. Some say it's an assembly. Others say it's a gathering. Uh, some use the Greek translation. I'm going to use the Hebrew. The word holy convocation is the word Mikha e Kodesh in Hebrew, and it means a dress rehearsal. This is very, very important because actually a dress rehearsal is the sanctification process. You and I right now are in a dress rehearsal. Even when we break bread and we take communion, what is it really? It's remembering what Yeshua, what Jesus did for us on the cross, but it's also a dress rehearsal to consummate the marriage and drink that wine with Messiah Yeshua in the new Jerusalem, in the new heavens, new earth. And this is what it's all about. So it's all a dress rehearsal. The Bible is all a dress rehearsal to prepare us for his second coming. So we see that in the Feast of the Lord, there's dress rehearsals here. Very, very important. Uh, so this is, uh, so I'm just going to uh, paraphrase it again, what it says in Hebrew. Speak on to the children of Israel, that's you and I, all those under the blood of Jesus, concerning my fixed appointed time, which you shall preach as a dress rehearsal. And he ends by saying, even these are my feasts. So the question is, why would God want his feast to be a dress rehearsal? And how, we, how can we apply to our life today as a believer in Jesus, something tangible that we can apply to our life today? And what does it have to do with leprosy? I'm going to tie all that in right now. But before I do that, I want to know if you wanted to weigh in something on this, Pastor Casper. Well, I would like to go back to something you just said about, you know, Jesus didn't wear a mask because he was God of all creation. But, you know, it does say John 14, 12, verily, verily, it stands you, he that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do. Also, greater works than he shall he do because they go on to the Father. Obviously, we can't do anything greater than he did. Anyway, that, that's a very good question, a very good observation, Pastor Casper. Jesus did say that you'll do greater things than I did. And if Yeshua, in the Bible, we just read the book of Luke chapter 17, uh, from beginning verse 11, healed the lepers, I mean, he did tell them to go to the priest, and I'll touch on that, what that means a little bit later, uh, then that means that we also can heal the lepers. And if you're thinking about this COVID-19 right now, it's kind of like a leprosy, right? I mean, that's what it is, right? It's a different form. So it's, so we can actually go in and, and people that are sick with, the, with this COVID-19 or have been told that they're sick, I don't believe that everybody's really sick. You know, I think it's, uh, there's demonica outpouring behind the scenes working over here, spiritual warfare, but never, that's also a sickness. If you're being under an attack uh, of spiritual warfare and being told that you're sick, that's, you know, you are sick because you're being attacked by a demonic spirit and it needs to be cast out in the name of Yeshua. And you mentioned that there's so many believers that are not doing that. It's a spirit of fear. It's a spirit of unbelief. Um, they may say they believe, but uh, if you have faith in Messiah Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, we need to go, we need to cast out demons, we need to heal the sick. It's not our, I mean, we're just small people, but as servants of Yeshua, we have the authority to do that. He left us here as ambassadors, as priests for the kingdom. He left us here not to just you know, wear a mask and hide and quarantine and be scared and, you know, and join, the, and join the group. He left us here because it's a sick and dying and falling world. And we're supposed to go out there and tell people, don't put your trust in that mask. That mask is just something from the enemy trying to get you to hide. Pray for the people. Pray for their salvation. The ones that do believe in Yeshua, encourage them to be strong in the faith. That Bible verse is an excellent Bible verse. You'll be able to do greater things. I'll tell you what I see in that. Uh, according to the Hebrew, I'm sure there's a lot of uh, observations and a lot of points uh, and teachings on that. I've, I've pondered on that for a long time, on that Bible verse where it says greater. I mean, how can I do something greater than the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? And I looked at the, at the Hebrew, and I understand that the Hebrew actually also means uh, that uh, greater means greater in time. Now, what does that mean, greater in time? It means that from the time that Yeshua rose from the dead, ascended to the Father. We're living in, in more sin, more sin, more sin. And as we're living in more sin and Bible prophecy is moving ahead, something is happening. More salvations are coming, more demonic outpouring, but more salvations are coming. And therefore, uh, it, it's greater. The time is greater. You'll be able to do greater things than me. It means that, uh, kind of like what he told Daniel, do not roll up, do not seal up the scroll, for the mystery of the end time has not yet come. That mystery is getting more and more revealed to us 
And as it's getting more and more revealed to us, Pastor Casper, we're able to do greater things, not greater than what Messiah did, but greater in time. Does that make sense? And that's what Hebrew means. It absolutely does make sense. So the Old Testament concealed what the New Testament revealed. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's a greater in that context, not a greater in actually that you'll be able to do greater things than me. You'll be able to do more things than I, than I did because you'll have more opportunities. There'll be more salvations. There'll be more demonic outpouring. That's what it means in the Hebrew text. So, you know, everything has to be in biblical balance and context. Uh, so that, I hope that cleared it up. And it, it, it's a time for us really to go out there and, and make disciples go out there and preach the gospel in this time, uh, and I know you're doing that, your ministry is doing that, you're preaching, you're confessing the truth, you're healing, you're casting out demons, and I'm excited to, to be a part of that with you, uh, Pastor Casper. What does all this have to do with the Feast of the Lord? Everything, because it's part of the dress rehearsal. It's part of the sanctification process. We all have leprosy. We understand what the panic is for those who have leprosy. The good news is we're telling them, go to the priests. And you have to ask yourself uh, uh, the question, in the Old Testament, uh, were there doctors? Absolutely. So why is Jesus, Yeshua, telling them to go show themselves to the priest? Because the priests actually were a foreshadow of those under the blood of Yeshua. The feasts were, you know, go show yourself to the priest. Who's the priest? It's Yeshua. He's the high priest. And therefore, he's the healer. He is the only one that can heal you. Go and show yourself to the high priest, which is a foreshadow uh, of what we need to do. We need to show ourselves to the high priest. We need to ask the high priest Yeshua to heal us, to cleanse us, to enable us to preach his word. And that's why it uses the word priest here. There's a very deep meaning why it does. And if you don't, if you don't understand the feast of the Lord, uh, and you've been told that these feasts have nothing to do with you, when you read Bible verses like this, and it tells you to go to the priest, it actually has nothing to do with you. Because if the feast belonged to Israel, so the priest also belonged to Israel. So all these Bible verses don't apply to you. And basically, you can just, you know, don't read your Bible anymore because it's all about the feasts. Uh, the feasts point to Yeshua. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 7, I have come in the scroll of the book. It is written about me. That means that everything in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is written about Yeshua, about Jesus. That includes Leviticus 23, verse 2, the feast of the Lord. So we saw that God wants us to, uh, to proclaim his word. He wants us to talk about these feasts. He wants us to proclaim it. He doesn't want us to follow rabbinic tradition. He doesn't want us to follow religion. Uh, I'm not coming against uh, the religious leaders. I'm not coming against the rabbis. But like I always like to say, Pastor Casper, we can't love people over righteousness. The true gospel has to be preached. And it's very important that we make, uh, we, we clear things up over here on this program. We are not in any way endorsing religion. We're endorsing the word of God. And we, you can celebrate the feast of the Lord by going to God's fixed appointed time. Uh, we are called the bride of Jesus. The question is, how are we called the bride of Yeshua if we have not consummated the marriage yet? How are we the bride? Because according to According to the Bible, when a man uh, patrols a woman, she's called the bride. We have been patrolled by Yeshua. The Bible's clear on it. He has patrolled us. Uh, he has, he's, we're engaged in him, and therefore, we're considered the bride. In stage number one, we have not yet consummated the marriage. When we consummated the marriage, when we meet the Lord in the air and go home. And until that time, it's all a dress rehearsal. It's all a, uh, a sanctification process. And that's where these feasts are, are, are so important. And then, you know, this would explain also, and I, I believe I spoke about it before, why the Bible says in the book of Matthew that uh, Joseph wanted to divorce Melia. He wanted to divorce Mary in his mind. Well, how can he divorce Mary when they weren't married yet? Well, because they were engaged. And according to biblical Hebrew foundation, Bible, not religion, when a man is betrothed to a woman, she's considered uh, his bride in stage number one, and that would explain why Joseph wanted to, in his mind, divorce Mary. Again, if you don't understand the biblical Hebrew foundation, you want to understand how Joseph can want to divorce Mary, and just read those Bible verses and skip over them like they don't mean anything, but everything in the Word of God has a deep meaning, and it really, all of it, all the New Testament, all the book of Revelation, everything really comes from the Old Testament, so you have to uh, understand the front of the book in order to understand the back of the book. Mm -hmm. uh, context so that's that's how it all ties in so we're called to uh, uh to go to a dress rehearsal for three main reasons number one 
to prepare ourselves for his second coming. Number two, to be a witness to believers who have been told these feasts don't have nothing to do with them. They have to do with religion. It has nothing to do with believers in the New Testament. To be a witness to them, and that's what we're doing today here, uh, Pastor Casper, and to Jews in Israel and around the world who are celebrating these feasts, but they're celebrating it under a religious spirit. They don't believe Yeshua. It's our duty to show them that these feasts are all pointing to Messiah, to Jesus, Yeshua. They're also pointing to his second coming, even the ones that he fulfilled. That's why I said there are multiple fulfillments. The Bible says with the sound of the trump, we meet the Lord in the air and go home. God's voice is a trumpet. And therefore, these feasts of trumpets are really calling us to hear God's voice. That's what it's all about. So we have an appointment with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And you may be asking, uh, well, how do I know when these feasts begin? Well, this year, the Feast of Trumpets is going to be on the 18th of, uh, of this month, sundown. It, it begins. But uh, if you go to my, uh, uh, my website, messiahofisraelministries.org, you'll uh, scroll down and there, there's a biblical uh, ca calendar there. And you'll be able to see all the feasts and the time where they start according to the calendar. So I would encourage the people to go there and see that. Well, I think sometimes um, it's a little bit more difficult for guys um, to understand this Bride of Christ concept. But it's like, you know, if you were living in London, you'd be a Londoner. Or in New York, you'd be a New Yorker, right? So it's kind of like that same concept when, when the Lord refers as the Bride of Christ. It's um, ha hallelujah that we've been included in this amazing um, gathering together and being caught up in the, in the air with him, which uh, I believe... Uh, may happen much sooner than most people expect. Amen, absolutely. So God really wants us to prepare and to be prepared for, uh, that's, that's what these feasts are about. They're dress rehearsals. Uh, it's important that we celebrate these feasts. You know, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verses 16 to 17 says, three times a year, all your males shall appear before me in the place where I shall choose. At the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, which ties in with Passover, the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the last and final feast. Uh, we're entering into those feasts right now. We're beginning with the Feast of Trumpets, then we're going into the Day of Atonement, and then we're going into the last feast, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. But uh, it's very important that I bring out, uh, Pastor Casper, that there are a lot, a lot of believers around the world that think, or that they, they have been told, that as believers in Jesus and Yeshua, if, if they accept this concept of the Bible, then they, they must be in Israel three times a year. But if you read the text clearly, that's not what the Bible says. It says at the place where God shall choose. What does that mean? It means maybe God has chosen you to be in Atlanta this year. Maybe God has chosen me to be in America this year. Wherever God has chosen you to be, it's a heart issue. Uh, that is where you'll be. So we are not required to be in Israel three times a year. That is a misunderstanding, uh, mistranslation. Uh, I, I gather if you have a tour company or if you want to bring tourists to Israel, it's a good concept, but that's not what the Bible says. There are other Bible passages uh, in the book of Zechariah and other places that says, uh, and it will come to pass that all the nations, and I'm paraphrasing, that all the nations of the earth shall come to Jerusalem to worship the king uh, in the Feast of Tabernacles, and those that don't come shall not have any rain. Rain represents in the Bible a uh, blessing, but we need to understand that that's not speaking about now. That's speaking about the second coming of Jesus Yeshua when he will reign for a thousand years. So it's very important when we read the Bible, uh, to read the Bible in context and to know, okay, what Bible verses apply to the thousand year millennial reign and what Bible verses apply to now. Uh, so those Bible verses are, are applying to the thousand year millennial reign and they're not to be mixed up with Deuteronomy chapter 16. Now, am I, am I telling you, if you've been, uh, if, you know, if you come to Israel on the Feast of Tabernacles or other feasts uh, or the Feast of Trumpets, not to come. I'm not saying that. God is not commanding you to come. God is commanding you to worship. He's commanding you to be grateful. He's commanding you to recognize that you were once a, a leper and you've been cleansed and you've been healed. Uh, leprosy represents sin. And the, we know that the wages of sin is death. And only th for, through the blood of Jesus Yeshua can we be cleansed. This is why I say we were all lepers one time. That's exactly what uh, the book of Luke 17 is, is a foreshadow of. That's why it talks about the priest over there. Very important to realize that. And I am saying that we are to go to God's fixed appointed time, not in a religious aspect, but in a, a biblical aspect. And wherever God has positioned you to be, just as the Bible says, very, very important to realize that, to bring that out, because uh, a lot of people feel uh, that they have some kind of an obligation, that they must come to Israel 
whether you know it or not, if you're a child of the living God, if you're under the blood of Jesus, you will come to Israel eventually in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. We'll all be coming back on flying white horses with the Lord Yeshua as well. We're living, I mean, in a time of demonic outpouring. Uh, the battle has always been against the people of God. The people of God, uh, you know, the chosen people were Israel, and now the chosen people are Israel and all those that are partakers of Israel, as I keep on saying, spiritually Israel, uh, part of the commonwealth of Israel, the one new man. The battle is against us, and absolutely, I mean, all these uh, uh, television and, and, and fake news and uh, all this uh, uh, panic over the uh, coronavirus, this is all demonic, this is all to get us away from worshiping God. You know, we, we read before in the book of Luke about the leper that came back. He came back and he, he worshiped God. He got on his knees and worshiped God. And miracles cannot proceed without gratitude. If there's no gratitude, there's no miracles. If you want a miracle in your life, you have to have faith. You have to have a gratitude. Because a miracle will pursue the gratitude. He, was, he had faith because he went and showed himself to the priest. And then he came back with a with with gratitude. And I think that if we want to experience, as you said, if we were be reading our Bible as much as we watch the news and other things, we want to experience the, the, the miracles in our life, we have to be grounded in the Word of God. And I think that Psalms 104 is a beautiful passage, especially when you read it in the Hebrew, where it says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. You see, God wants us to thanksgiving with praise. But in Hebrew, the word is, Enter into his gates with todah. The word todah doesn't only mean thanksgiving. It also means a choir. It also means thanksgiving and worship. That's what it actually means. Enter in his court with praise and thankful unto him and bless his name. But you know what the word bless his name in Hebrew is? In Hebrew is bless is the word barach. And barach means to get on your knees. Get on your knees and praise the Lord. So we can see right here in Psalms 104 exactly what we read in the book of Luke, when that leopard from the nations, by the way, a Samaritan from the nations, a foreigner, as the Bible calls it, uh, grafted into spiritual Israel, realizes that Messiah Yeshua has healed him. He gets on his knees and he gives a gratitude of thanksgiving. And thus he saw the miracle because miracles precede gratitude. And I think we have to have a grateful heart uh, and, and praise his name if we want to see miracles in our life. And we'll be able to overcome everything. As I always like to say, today it's the COVID-19, tomorrow is going to be something else. We live in a fallen world. These type of things are not going to end. They're going to continue until Jesus, until Yeshua returns. That's just the biblical truth. It's the 10 lepers and only one comes back. I mean, if he healed today, it'd be the same thing. Only one would come back and fall at his face and, and worship at his feet. You have to realize there's a miracle there in order to proceed. You know, as I said again, miracles precede gratitude. And if we don't have a grateful heart, that miracle, uh, not only are we not going to recognize that miracle, God gives miracles to people sometimes in order to bring him into the kingdom, in order to show his glory. And those nine lepers didn't see that, didn't, uh, you know, all they were concerned about, you know, let's, let's leave this area right now, we're healed and that's it, without giving uh, praise and thanks to the Lord. And who gave praise and thanks to the Lord? It's that person from the nation. Same thing's happening right now here in Israel. We're surrounded right here in Israel by over 120 million enemies. How is it possible that 120 million enemies cannot destroy Israel? Because the hand of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is upon Israel. He has a covenant with Israel. No one will be able to destroy Israel. The only one that will be able to cease this world is Messiah Yeshua. On Judgment Day, no man can do it. And therefore, we have the same situation right now where we tell people, do you, do you realize that Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, is the one that's protecting you? That's why you're not uh, being destroyed. Not because you're great. Not because you have some kind of uh, you know, worship in a religion. And they're not grateful. And they don't realize it, just like those nine leopards. And who realizes it? The one from the nations. That's what's happening right now. The, the, most of the nations are the ones that believe in Yeshua right now. Now it's time for the nations to be partakers in the salvation of Israel, bring the gospel back to Jerusalem, and go home. But we see the same thing happening. Nothing's changed in 2,000 years. The gratitude that's given to Israel is not being appreciated. It's not being exercised. But you know what? That's what grace is all about. Grace will come to an end, and great judgment will come. And that's why it's so important 
that the gospel be preached right now, that the foreigner that received that blessing, that been healed from leprosy, that he'll be used by God right now for such a time like this. And that's what you're doing, Pastor Casper. That's what Carl Gallus is doing. Brandon, uh, all you guys are doing, uh, you are realizing right now uh, the miracle that God did and realizing that the, those nine leopards from Israel uh, have not realized it yet. And it's time for us to shine the light and to show them that they too have been healed uh, eternity from leprosy. I think all believers, uh, myself included, all of us need to social distance. We need to social distance ourselves from the devil. That's what we need to do. We need to, to, to keep away from the devil, keep away from the world system, keep away from the fake news and preach the truth. That's the best social distancing that you can do today, Pastor Casper. Amen? Amen.